often we need to represent a limited set of possibilities. A web request either succeeds or fails. A user can only be a pro user or a standard user. To model this, we could use an enum, but this carries a number of limitations. Enum classes only allow a single instance of each value and can't encode more information on each type. So for example, for the error case, we can't have an associated exception. You could use an abstract class and a number of extensions, but this loses the restricted set of types advantage brought by enums. Sealed classes provide the best of both worlds. The freedom of representation of abstract classes and the restricted set of types of enums. In this video, I'll tell you more about how to use sealed classes, about the autocomplete power brought by the ID, and we'll end by looking under the hood at how sealed classes are implemented in the decompiled Java code. If you learn something new, like the video and subscribe to the channel, but only if you think we've earned it. Like abstract classes, sealed classes allow you to represent hierarchies. The child classes can be any type of class, a data class, an object, a regular class, or even another sealed class. But unlike abstract classes, you have to define these hierarchies in the same file or as nested classes. Trying to extend the seal class outside the file it was defined in yields a compile error. Often we want to handle all possible types, but what if we need to add a new type of result, like in progress? Rather than relying on our bad memory and an IDE search to ensure that all when usages handle the new class, the compiler can give us an error if a branch is uncovered. When, like the if statement, only requires us to cover all options, so to be exhaustive, by producing a compiler error when it's used as an expression. To get this cool benefit even when we're using when as a statement, add this helper extension property. So now, by adding dot .exhaustive, if a branch is missing, the compiler will give us the same error we saw previously. As all subtypes of a seal class are known, the ID can fill all possible branches of a when statement for us. But this autocomplete feature really shines when we deal with more complex seal classes hierarchies, as the ID can recognize all branches. So let's say that we have two types of error, recoverable error and non-recoverable error. So now our result has even more possible options. The ID will generate all of these branches. This is the type of functionality that can't be implemented with abstract classes, as the compiler doesn't know the inheritance hierarchy. Therefore, the ID can't generate the branches. So what makes seal classes behave as they do? Let's take a simple result example and see what's going on in the decompiled Java code. First, the metadata of the seal class keeps the list of the child classes, allowing the compiler to use this information where needed. The result is implemented as an abstract class with two constructors, a private default constructor and a synthetic constructor that can only be used by the Kotlin compiler. So this means that no other class can directly call the constructor. If you look at the decompiled code of the success class, we see that it calls through to the synthetic constructor. That's all I have to say about seal classes. Start using them to model restricted class hierarchies, allowing the compiler and the ID to help you avoid type errors. Are you already using them? Leave a comment below and tell us where and how. Thanks for watching, and go write better Android apps with Kotlin.